Hey, what's cracking, everybody? Today, I was running through a uh, SourceForge page, and I decided to do a search for Linux to see if I could find some uh, Linux distros on here that I haven't taken a look at. And uh, sure enough, there's a lot of uh, distros that come up right here. So like Blizz OS, MX Respin, Flick OS, Blade OS. So, you know, I mean, and these MX respins, they're just like MX Linux, but with like certain desktops, things like that. So what I did is uh, I downloaded this Blade OS and it says a distro based on Debian that has everything pre-configured. Welcome to Blade OS, a distro based on Debian that has everything pre-configured and ready to go. Latest version 24.2 Blissful, based on Debian 12.7 Bookman. Last updated 2024.0901. So it's a couple months old, but hey, let's take a look at it and see what it has to offer. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on C project. And right here is pretty much their SourceForge page. So you can download it. You just click the download button and you get it. So I got it up in a virtual machine. Let's go ahead and uh, run through the installer and see what Blade OS is all about. Alrighty, I got the ISO booted up and it looks like it booted into a, I want to say a GNOME desktop environment. So uh, let's click on this and take a look at it. All right, and we do have a welcome screen. So but what I'm looking for is like an installer. Maybe it's on here. No, let's just click on next because nothing comes up right here. Okay. English. Click on next. Uh, type in English US is checked off by default. So I'm not even sure if this is the installer or not, but uh, let's just go through it. Location services allow applications to determine your geographical location uses the Mozilla location service. Um, um, I don't like leaving things like this on, but uh. Let's just click on next, see what happens. Connect your online accounts, skip, all done. Start using Blade OS 24.2. Blade OS 24.2 is ready to be used. We hope that you love it. Okie doke. So, uh, is this like a live environment or does it actually install? Hmm, good question. So let's take a look at the applications. All right, right here we have something that says install blade and it looks like the same icon as this right here. But right here it says software and right here it says install blade. So let me go ahead and click on it, see what happens. All right, and it definitely opens up the uh, Calamari's installer. So let's go ahead and run through this. Mark English selected, click next. New York is not my time zone. It's Los Angeles. Click next. Uh, English US for the keyboard day out. And then right here, I'll select erase disk and swap the file. It was already selected by default. I'll switch this to ext4. Hopefully, it didn't break anything. And get our overview. Install. Install now. Now, I, did, I didn't enter any user info. So I wonder if it's going to make me do that uh, once we uh, reboot. But uh, anyways, we'll go through this process and then I'll go ahead and reboot and we'll take a look and see if I have to answer some user info after we've rebooted. All right, then the starter completed. So I'm going to hit and reboot it. And as I mentioned before, I never entered any uh, user info. So I wonder if that's going to happen right now. So we have the welcome screen that we saw when we first booted the ISO. Only thing is that we are not on a the dark theme now. Click next. Yeah, it's pretty much showing you what we saw already. So I'll just go to click next again. Uh, location services. We're not going to do that. Time zone. Los Angeles. Connect your accounts. Skip. All right. Now it says about you. 
So give myself a username. Set parental controls for the user. Nope. All right, give myself a password. Make sure it's a strong and complicated password. All done. All righty, so we've installed Blade OS. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fix the uh, screen resolution. So let me go to uh, settings. And where's the space right there? Let me set this to 1920 by 1080. There it is. Click on apply. Keep changes. All righty. So we can go ahead and uh, close this now. All right. So it's now all fully installed. We've got the resolution fixed. And it looks like we are using the uh, GNOME desktop environment. So uh, let's run through uh, Blade OS and see what we have. Well, starting off with the panel, we have the panel on top, which is standard on uh, all GNOME systems. And on this panel, we have, of course, the, uh, the big button that has all the settings, power options, and everything inside of one button that looks like three different options, but it's all just one button. No matter which one you click, it's all going to open up the same thing. And from in here is where you get to your settings and your power options and things like that. And you also have some notifications right here. All right. And in the center of our uh, panel, we have our time, date and time. So clicking on it opens up the calendar. Then you can set up some events. And then on the left, you have your activities. And your activities is where you get to your menu and all that. Well, well, you can get to your menu all the time just by clicking on this right here to show applications. With this right here, you can get to your other desktops and things like that. You can do your search. So if you want to search for something. All right. And then on the bottom, we have a, a dock panel. Or, yeah, we'll just call it a dock panel. And from right here, you have your show applications. So clicking on this will open up all of your applications. And then you also have a trash, help, rhythm box, LibreOffice, Geary, software, files, and Firefox. So let's go through this uh, show applications again and see if there's anything on here that's uh, out of the ordinary we have the utilities and office that are grouped into groups so clicking on this opens up everything inside of here and you can tell by the three dots right here there's there's actually three groups of uh of little curated applications so you got your image viewer your software time shift tweaks disk usage text editors document viewers on this one right here and you click on the next one we got bleach bed, extension manager, extensions, G parted, input method, H top, firewall configuration, and characters. And on the last one, you have logs and plots. And that's under utilities. Under office, we just have the uh, basic uh, LibreOffice suite. But other than that, everything is pretty uh, straightforward. You got your terminal, you know, your videos, calculator, settings, pretty much your standard info right here. All right, and that is on your uh, show applications uh, tab. Then you also have a trash can right here on your dock. So if you click on it, if you have anything in the trash can, you'll be able to uh, right click it or click on it, and it'll give you a set of functions that you can work with. And then next to that, we have a help. It's going to be your standard uh, known help right here. So if there's any uh, issues or anything you want to learn about, about your uh, GNOME system, you can click on this. And then from here, you just uh, check your respected uh, topic that you want to look into and uh, take it from there and take a look at it. All right. And the next thing that we have here on our dock panel is Rhythmbox. Rhythmbox is a music player. It's pretty uh, standard music player. You'll find it on GNOME, Cinnamon type desktops. Uh, you can use it on any desktop that you want to, but you know, these are the ones that come standard with. It's going to be on GNOME and on the Cinnamon desktops. All right, and it is a rhythm box, so you can just 
uh, click on the X right here from here, create a new playlist. Uh, you know, you can load uh, music from file and you can check for new devices, like if you plugged in a phone or anything like that. All right. Next to that, we have LibreOffice. So if you click on LibreOffice, it's going to be your standard LibreOffice suite. Pretty much uh, what comes standard with LibreOffice, you get your account and your writer and you can press, draw, map, and your base. So the one that I use the most is going to be the spreadsheet. I use this for work, for my type of work at least. And this is the one that I use the most. And if you, you see you have two X's right here. So if you click on the top X, it's going to close LibreOffice altogether. But if you click on the smaller little X right here, it'll take you back to right here where you can get to these other uh, other sections and things like that. So notice right here, you have two X's. You click the one on the bottom and it'll bring you back to the uh, to the base page. This way you can uh, select whatever you want to select. And then you click on the top one and it just closes out the program. And that's LibreOffice. Next to that, we have Geary. I'm trying to remember what Geary is. I don't at the moment. Uh, looks like we had a little uh, diagnosis memory uh, message and it probably crashed. May or may not have crashed. Let's click on it again. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's crashing. So I guess we'll leave it alone. It does kind of look like it has a X over it. So maybe it's telling us. Anyway, next to that we have a uh, software, and this is going to be pretty much your uh, GNOME software. You can just click on uh, about, yeah, software, the GNOME project. And this is your, uh, you know, your software, your, your graphical software installer. So from here, you know, you can do a search, click right here, and you can look for, let's see, you want to find GIMP, you just type in GIMP. And then after a little search, it'll find it. You click on it. And right here, you have an install. And underneath the install, there's also another little button right here. So you can install it from Flathub. And it says unknown sources. So if we click on that, let's see what happens. It's going to connect from Blade. So I think this is just going to be the standard uh, Debian repository. So let's try to click on install. It asks you for your password. Give it your password, let it authenticate, and then it'll just go through the installation. So while it's going through this, we'll just move on to the next one, which is uh, files. And files is just uh, your uh, your standard. Uh, if you're like a Windows user, this would be your Explorer. You know what I mean? But this it's your file manager. This is your file manager, and you can see you got your standard layout. You got your desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, and videos. And if you want to check for uh, hidden folders, dot files, things like that, you will click on Control H on your keyboard, and it will show you know it will show the hidden files. And if you want to make them disappear, Control H again. All right, it looks like uh, GIMP has first installed it. Let's click on open, see if it opens it up. It does. And it is GIMP 2.10. All right, this pretty much works. No problems whatsoever. All righty. And this, of course, is your software manager. Now, if you click on Explorer, you have your uh, topics like create, work, play, socialize, learn, develop, and then you got your editor's choice and new and updated, other categories, you know, or you could just search. And then right here, you also have a tab that says installed. If you click on this, it's just basically going to show you everything that is installed on your system. And then last but not least, you have your updates. So from right here, if you want to go ahead and update your system, you would just you can select right here from restart and update, or you can just update all. That that'll update your entire system. But uh, since this is a virtual machine, leave that alone and be done with it. All right, so let me get back to settings. 
Let me look at some theming. It's right now. It looks like it's a it's like a cross between dark and light themes. But uh let's click on appearance, see what it's automatically set as. And it does look like dark is selected. And I noticed that default right here shows like light and dark themes, but it shows that dark is selected. And uh, all right. I just want to look into it and see if uh, there was anything else to set up here. I guess we could go to activities and go to search and we can look at tweak. If you wanted to get into a deeper uh, theme in the system, because with GNOME systems, you have uh, you have the shell themes. Like right now, I have the Blade OS, and then you have the uh, the legacy applications, which are your GTK themes. All right, so if you want to theme it up more, you know, you got your cursor themes, icons, your shell. You can even change sounds, legacy applications, background images. Pretty much change it all. All right, well. Like I said, uh, I'm just going through SourceForge, doing the search, and finding uh, new distros that I've never taken a look at. And uh, this one is a pretty good system. It's a Debian-based system. It's not heavy at all. It's using GNOME, and uh, everything feels light. As a matter of fact, let me uh, open up the terminal. Let me click on uh, some HTOP. Mm, you can see right there. It is using 1.50 gigabytes out of four gigabytes, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels actually very smooth and everything is running uh, as it should. Let's see if they have NeoFetch on here. And we do have NeoFetch also. So right here you can see Blade OS 24.2. The kernel it's using 6.1. And you got the rest of your information right here that you can look at. So if you want to pause the video and read it all, have at it. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, that's what I'm going to do uh, moving forward. I'm just going to search for distros and uh, find something that I haven't seen before and take a look at it. And that way we can see them together, see what they look like, see how they operate. And uh, if it's something you're interested in, Remember the download links will be in the video description and you can download it and play with it. Just remember to test it out in the virtual machine before you go bare metal with it. That way you can avoid any uh, headaches and things like that. All right, and if there's something specific uh, one of you guys want me to take a look at, please leave it down in the uh, comments and I'll do my best to get to it. All right, uh, if you're a new user, it's the first time you see in my videos, and you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you like the, con the content you're seeing, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for this video. And I'm out.